Hello and welcome to another edition of the Aussie Ideas Man. The troll who can't help but laugh at all the things I see going on with Aptera. We're really getting to the pointy end of whether Aptera lives or dies. And this video is where I get a little bit... Uh, the only word I can say is confused. I don't like to be confused, but just a bit unsure about what I'm seeing with these latest videos. This time I'm going to concentrate on the cretins from AOC first, who takes into account what he's seen from Steve Fambro's recent video from Aptera Motors. After that, I thought I'd just add the over-the-top talk by that cretin from Free Power, who also blocks me now. Didn't used to, but he's decided to block me. And I actually thought he didn't have much in the way of ethics. And it turned out, eventually, he proved himself to be a cretin. I only do his because I just love the way he, he rants and raves. <laughs> he's, he's like a five-year-old kid. Anyway, I've put it in there for entertainment value. My um, confusions are all about the things we see. First, off the bat, I'll have to say that I'm not even sure that what I see are the real blocks because Aptera is prolific when it comes to putting up renders. They put things up and they don't tell you it's a render and they pretend or try to fool people into thinking that's real most often. I'll just run through this and it'll be rough as usual. I'm never polished, but I'll run through this and make comments as I see fit. Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Uh, a couple of days ago, Aptera put out this uh, video and we've seen these pictures from Jason uh, Hill's LinkedIn page, but... Uh, was, hey Aptera fans. It was good to see it here and uh, Steve Ambro is hosting this one. Steve Ambro here with another monthly update. I'll just pause here and say another monthly update. I don't know what month in 2019 they began, but try to check through their videos at Aptera Motors and look for at least 40 monthly updates. I'd think by now this should be at least 40. I know they have a few other Mickey Mouse type videos where they talk to the staff and ask them if they like pizza or tacos and where they'd like to drive an Aptera, but just concentrate on the monthly updates. And if you can find 40 of them, have a look and see if they go any more than 80 minutes. They are notoriously slow and they are mostly full of we want money. We want money. If you took out we want money, you would get almost no update. So there's that. We'll keep going. We've got incredible news to announce today. Thanks in part to our accelerator program. Okay, I'll stop here too because they began tooling before the accelerator program began. So why is he giving credit to the accelerator program? The accelerator program has raised $4 million and they want $50 million. So I don't think they should be all that grateful at the moment for the Accelerator program. It's not going to make it. It's something like $46 million shy of it. I know they just say, well, just from the program, we will want $20 million. But really, they want minimum $50 million and they are $46 million shy of it now and well into the end date coming up. I think it's March 26th. We recently began cutting the production tooling for Aptera's six main body structures. You can see I've added a bit of a scrolling text here because this is the beginning of the confusion. And I'm going to look more closely at these blocks. We see two blocks of the side panel. Number four as the cretin numbers them, I think it is. But we see two views of it. There has to be two to make the mould. You have to have the concave and the convex, because the convex goes into the concave to make the actual part. I'm thinking, first of all, that the first one we see is the convex but it actually looks like a glass sheet i'll go into it later but it looks like a glass sheet and it isn't too clear and it also doesn't look like it fits the concave that comes a little later we see the concave 
and they just don't look like they fit. I've tried to reverse and flip them so that they're looking from the same way and they just don't look like they fit. They don't look like one block goes into the other. Even the borders of the blocks don't fit and you can't get a convex section going inside the concave section and maybe leaving three or four mils for the part to form. But more on that later. With our world-class manufacturing partner, CPC Group, and their tooling facility in Modena, Italy. Production tooling and automotive manufacturing are the specifically and carefully designed tools that we'll use to forge vehicle parts. With CPC Group, we've cut several ton steel blocks that we'll use to make. All right, so they um, have mentioned this a couple of times. They bought this steel six months ago and they've started cutting it. And now you can see them cutting it here. And I think there's another picture of it. This is obviously uh, one of the qu uh, quarter panels. Well, this is the convex and it looks glassy to me, the block. It doesn't look like steel. For a start, if you look below, you can see the pads, these rectangular black pads that the thing's sitting on. If this was steel, you wouldn't see those pads. It just looks like glass. I don't know. Take a good long look at it and tell me what you think. And another observation I make is if you take the exterior of this piece at the bottom right hand edge of it, it is super thin. And later I find the delta is about six times that thickness. So there is a massive difference. The other thing is, I recall the Cretan saying that this panel has an interior and an exterior. The interior is supposed to be made of the carbon fibre and the exterior of some other material that is cheaper to make and more robust for hitting, like shopping to trolley strikes and stuff like that. This thing looks like the cheaper exterior, so why are they moulding it for the interior? It doesn't look like the interior because on either side, and this would be the right-hand side, that would be the one with the circular hole for the speaker. If it was the right-hand one with the circular hole for the speaker, they don't have any provision to make the hole. And if they're stamping something, it's easier to have the mould or the die make that hole rather than waste the material and cut the hole out later. That's extra cost. Nothing adds up so far. Think about it yourself. Am I that crazy that I'm imagining all these things? Because I'm just seeing these things with my eyes and trying to work out how they can be realistic. So if you look here, uh, let's see. It's, uh, let, hmm, did I go the wrong way? Yeah. So it's, it's got to be this piece right here. And there's probably another uh, similar piece for this. And so there's six total uh, parts the one two three four five six um and so that's what they're talking about there and so this is clearly this piece oh shoot i'm sorry this piece right here i'll stop here at my putting on the big number four there because for a start if that's the convex piece that's not glass and steel if that's the convex piece then it's clearly not that piece. It's the uh, right-hand side, not the left-hand side. Nevertheless, if he's just referring to the shape, I have a little bit of confusion with this shape also because that shape doesn't enclose around the door. It only does the bottom half. So what's the extra piece that's showing here that encloses around where the door opening is? More pieces? I don't know bit confused. But there's another piece I can't figure out what it is, and you'll see it later on in this video. Your very own solar electric vehicles. So now we're looking at what is clearly a, a block of steel and what looks like a concave section. This looks like the concave left-hand side. If you flip it the right way, and I'll do that later, this looks like the concave left-hand side. So now they're showing us that they've got a convex right-hand side and a concave left-hand side. And that's because... And you can see this is right after they got done uh, shaping it. There's all the little um, flex from the CNC machine. Because of your belief and in investment in Aptero. Now I've put the two together in the same way. And as you can see, 
take a look at the bottom one first. Ignore the fact that it looks like glass. If it was steel, you have a right-hand side convex shape, which would go inside the top one if it was right-hand side concave, but it's not. It's left-hand side concave. Both of them don't have any part that surrounds the door. They stop well short of it. But if you look at the lumps and shapes of the external thick parts, the convex has to go inside that to make the stamp. Well, not that one, but the other one, if they got one for it. This process began over six months ago. Okay, this is the piece I can't figure out. What is this piece? It looks symmetrical, like it's like a big McDonald's sign, like a big M. And I can't figure out which one of these pieces it would be. It, yeah, maybe it's a door piece or one of the wheel fenders. Mm. If any of you, anyone has an idea what this is, let us all know in the comments. I read, I don't know, 50 or so comments on his comment section. And I found that some were saying it was the reinforcing bars inside the doors which another person said, no, can't be, they're made of steel and these people don't make steel parts. Another said it was parts of the rear hatch and that sounds crazy to me because none of these parts is rear hatch. And the other thing is there's that factory a couple of k's out of Carlsbad, Vista I think it is, that it's been making lots of rear hatches and putting them on the roof. And there were a few more crazy suggestions as to what it could be. And really, they just didn't add up. Because I've, I've been staring at this for a while, and I have no clue what it is. And it involves designing the parts and the tooling. Now, this one here is showing that the block that is convex drops over the concave, which is natural because you can't put the material in the convex side if it was underneath. You have to put the material in the concave section and have it underneath. So how does that pan out with the picture? The convex looks like it slides over the top. That glass looking one looks like it's got a big area that slides over the top. But when you get to the picture of the concave one, it also has such a big rim that it looks like it goes over the top. So one of them is wrong. Even if it's not the left and the right to fit together, still one of them has to be wrong because you can't have the top one fitting over the top of the bottom one and then the other one, the top one sliding inside the bottom one. Machining that tooling and then eventually operating the tooling and presses to forge Aptera's parts. Our partnership with CPC gives us control over the quality, functionality and cost of the tooling because of their vertically integrated business strategy. Vertical integration is combining in one firm two or more stages of production normally operated by separate firms. So vertical integration is all about the stages of production. What he's saying is quality, functionality and cost. None of those are stages of production. <laughs> he's equating three irrelevant things to vertical integration. And when you think about it, any vehicle that is manufactured really has to have two or more stages operated by separate firms. It's not a vehicle is made 100% inside of one company. So this is just par for the course. It's something that always happens. And yet he is trying to say it's a feature of CPC. It's not a feature of them or CPC. It's natural. Okay, let's, let's go back to this. So, um, you know, obviously this is the big forge that they use. They have like a hundred ton press that presses down and they put the uh, the chopped carbon fibers with the resin in there and they push it into these uh, the dyes or molds, whatever you want to call them. I don't, I, some people told me that the technically correct word is a dye rather than a mold, but it presses the uh, the carbon fiber and it's that's why they call it forged carbon fiber because they're forging it in this thing. Um, and has a cure time of about two minutes and you can just like put it under extreme pressure and it and makes it into this. This is a giant piece of steel and it takes probably a ton of money to make this tooling. I'm suspecting that CPC Group is investing in Aptera somewhat 
by saying we'll take on the cost of making these molds. That's complete speculation on my part, but I think my guess is what that's what they're doing is that they're kind of letting them, um, giving them a pass on the upfront uh, die costs. But this puts into perspective the suggestion that a lot of people have of like, hey, Aptera just needs to get into production and hand build a few cars. The hand building a few cars just doesn't work with the way that Aptera is doing it. I think ha hand building a few cars worked initially when Aptera was using the sandwich core and maybe you know they could make those bodies by hand um, a one at a time using those like wooden jigs or something. Um, but the biggest cost of making this car go into production is making these dies and then making these supply agreements for getting uh, like tens of thousands of parts. They're going to need to make a specialized part for, you know, the obviously the Alafe motors are specialized and Alafe has to deliver lots of them. Someone has to forge these control arms. Someone has to supply them the HVAC system. Um, and even the gas struts in the back are um, specially designed for it. And so you have to tool all those up and make, making like one of them is going to basically cost the same as making like 10,000 of them in a way because much of the cost is up front. Like once you get this die done, stamping out additional body parts, the um, body panels isn't going to cost that much more. It's just, it's this initial cost and the cost of getting the supply chain set up. And uh, the same with these forged parts and all these things. So it's not like caught, like building one is like 1% 1 of the cost of building 100. Building the first one is probably like 90% of the cost of uh, building the next, you know, 100 of these. And every one that they build after that is incrementally less cost because there's so much upfront cost. Building one good prototype that they can use to prove all their unsubstantiated claims is only going to cost one good prototype. That's all. It's just one more. And they need to do it, and they need to do it quickly. For these things. So that's why you can't make, you can't make it one at a time. One, making it one at a time just doesn't work because they they've decided that they were going to make it a few at a time when they thought they were going to get like maybe a thousand orders or a couple hundred orders. But now they realize they have 41,000 orders and they need to scale up. And they've been talking to suppliers that give them, you know, 40,000 pieces. And those require a totally different supply chain and manufacturing technique. And over time, it has higher upfront costs, but it's going to cost less per unit. And that's the way they decided to go, which makes sense. And I think Sandy Monroe's been a big driver of this. And so that's why you can't build one at a time. Now, I disagree with him saying that because they're going to the expense of doing this, that they don't need to hand build. They still need to hand build for lots of valid reasons. The first thing is, is that they are so underdone with the prototypes they have made so far. We don't know that their solar works to the extent that it gives 40 miles per day or whatever it is. We don't know that it can do the top speed of 101 miles an hour or the four second quarter mile, not quarter mile, not to 60. We don't know all of these things. We don't know that the centre screen is going to work properly. There's so much we don't know. And by making a hand-built model that finishes off everything else, that makes sense to me. They can finish off everything else. It doesn't matter that the body that's being made here is not carbon fibre, but a different material with a slightly different weight and a slightly different strength and all of that. That doesn't matter because it still enables the rest of the vehicle to prove what it can do. And all of those things were underdone in the five prototypes they'd made to date and they really need a prototype better finished better completed in all of these other aspects the suspension you know they suspension tested it at chuck waller for what we could see was a couple of hours and we don't know that it is working properly from what i could tell with the gamma it's still not working properly other than the fact that fanboys seem to lie about it
But if I watch Quincy taking her ride in the gamma on a smooth road going slowly, there is too much bounce. And pictures are worth a thousand words. So these people with skin in the game that turn around and say, oh, it's smoother than the VW taxi that brought me to it, I don't believe it. Those people want money. Those people want their discounts on Apteras, thinking that they're going to be made. Um, and I'm guessing that this die is meant to last for decades. Um, and so they are on their way to production they just need some extra money to, you know, get the rest of the parts. So, that, you know, they, they might as well spend the extra, you know, 10, 15% to get all those things in line and then start going to volume production right away, which is their plan. Here's where I decided to bring them together to just see what the gap's like. The lower one, the main picture, is the gap bottom to the door of the gamma. And then we look at the insert and that's bottom to the door, not the internal part, but the actual door, same section, and it is much smaller. Hey, how are y'all doing today? I hope you're having a good day. I sure am because I'm so happy Aptera is stepping up their game. Oh my goodness, these guys are cooking with hot oil. The crazy cretin that sounds like Forrest Gump He's got this picture, and you can see now that where number four is, there are actually the inner and the outer. And so the tooling seems to be for the outer, not the inner. And once again, that outer, isn't that going to be a cheaper part? Shouldn't they be showing us the tooling for the carbon fibre? But in either case, both of them have the full door surround. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. All right, well, let, let's get into this. All right, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to my channel, Aptera lovers. You're gonna love this. I keep telling you, Aptera is gonna come out with this baby sooner or later. And the thing is, is if we help them out, get this thing on the road now, they'll come out with it sooner. If we don't help them out, come out with it now, they'll come out with it later. So, I mean, they've already started. I mean, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I can't wait for them to come out with this baby. But they've taken another large step forward. And um, we're just gonna we're just gonna get into this. Check this video out. I hope you've already seen it. If you haven't, well, you can check it out now. What Steve is talking about. Oh my goodness. Let's get into this. Let's get into it. As you can see, Aptera is on the move. They're not sitting back. These guys are stepping closer and closer to production. They already got the blocks being machined. And um, you can see that they're practically almost finished. And CPC is there. They're getting ready to start cranking up, putting the body parts together. So no doubt we'll probably be seeing maybe a Delta around June, maybe May, as I said earlier. And that's going to be fantastic. And we know that once they come out, once they come out, Aptera is going to have so many people interested in them because not only does it look different, it's going to capture everybody's attention. But once they find out that people can, uh, people can get the vehicle and it's solar powered, oh my, oh gosh, I know. This is the time to invest. This is the time you want to get in on Aptera at the ground level. Now, I am not a financial advisor. If you want to invest in Aptera, you need to talk to your consultant. I am not a consultant. But this would be the time to do it. This would be the time to get in on Aptera. And as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and look at their page. Let's see what um, is happening on the accelerator program. So once again, uh, probably leaderboard is going to be RP, and it is, yes, it is RP, number one again, and oh gosh, it has jumped again. Now we're up to 322 investors at $4.2 million. So people are getting on board here pretty quick. Oh, gosh, and they're not shy, man. I mean, these guys, we got some heavy hitters on here. 
But uh, the lineup is still the same. RP first, JB second, GT third, PG fourth, <laughs> PG. Um, WT fifth. But uh, all these guys I envy because they're going to get there at Terra for first. And um, they'll be able to, uh, especially RP here. I mean, oh gosh. But I mean, everybody on this board is going to be in, in a wonderful situation. That's what I love about Aptera. I mean, Steve and Chris, they are being very transparent. They're always letting you know up to date what's going on. So, I mean, you could tell by their character that they are going to give you the best vehicle possible. They are not going to cut any corners. Even with the simulation for on the computer that they're doing, they're not even taking that into account. They're still doing real world testing, as you can see from the video. So yes, these guys are really showing you how much they want a good product. They, they want it to be perfect for when it comes out. And if you don't invest in that terror, I mean, wow, you're, you're gonna miss out. But you can, if you just want to um, get the link, and this will take $30 off your down payment off of any Aptera that you want to design yourself, or you could use it to get the um, um, launch edition. Go ahead and use that. Feel free to take it, use it, and uh, it, you'll just have to put $70 down and so I'm telling you, these guys, they're gonna come out on all cylinders. They're cranking everything up to get this baby out. And once they do, Aptera's gonna become a household name in about two years. I guarantee it. Just like everybody's saying about Tesla, Aptera's gonna do the same thing. And so if you wanna check all my videos out, hit the like, smash the link, ring the bell, and you can catch all my videos. And we're keeping you up to date. But very soon, Aptera is going to be rolling. I'm telling you, they're going to be rolling. Mark my word. All right, y'all take care. Have a good one. Goodbye.